Hi all, we're Team PA Lines from Columbia University. My name is Ivy, and I'm here to present with my teammates, Mary and Agnes. Before we dive deep into our analysis, I would like to first give an overview of our project. The two questions we're trying to answer are, is there the great resonation, and if so, why? With the two questions in mind, we have conducted analysis to identify patterns and important factors, as well as providing customized recommendations to the Penn workforce. And in order to answer the first question, are there any signs of the great resonation? We took a close look into a total count of terminations, and we have two main observations. First, we observe a seasonality pattern, that Q3s are usually the peak time to leave the Penn workforce. And second, knowing that the great resonation refers to voluntary termination, we observe a significant peak in Q3 of 2021, reaching the highest volume of voluntary termination in the given data set, and taking up around 85% of the total terminations. About this peak, we would like to find out two things. First, uh, whether it is led by voluntary terminations, and second, is it due to COVID-19? Through this visualization, we can conclude in the long term that the termination is driven by voluntary termination reasons. But is this peak significant during the COVID, um, COVID period? Hardly so. The great resonation didn't start uh, with the pandemic. If we look at the voluntary termination rate for the last five years, we see a statistically significant increase. But if we limit the data to the past two and a half years, there's no significant trend. This means that the great resonation and the increase in voluntary termination that we observed is not a short-term turbulence provoked by the pandemic, but rather a continuation of a long-term trend. So which group have been the most significantly impacted for this long-term trend? We looked at the total number of attrition by each subgroup, and we find that by volume, employees with these characteristics are leaving the most. However, we should keep in mind that um, this result may be biased, depending on whether the subgroup labels are being evenly distributed in the first place. For example, sex A is double the number of sex, sex B in the pen workforce. So it makes sense to observe this kind of volume of attrition for the subgroup. So even though we have shown that there is no clear clues of great resignation in the pen workforce, we still want to further understand why did people leave during the recent COVID period. In summary, our key findings include two parts. On the left, we found that different job functions and different job organizations witnessed different levels of attrition. We should warn the pen management that some of them were losing the most talents. On the right-hand side, we uncovered the four factors that matter most to employee attrition. Salary, working from home, employee status, and age. We'll dive them into them in a minute. With regard to the most suitable methodology, we believe that survival analysis would be a better choice for this time-to-event kind of data. First and foremost, except for all the given attributes, we created a new attribute called average trend work from home. The definition of it is that if the employee used to work in the office, but his or her last status before censoring is working from home, then it is label one. This attribute aims to capture the trend from working in the office to working from home, and we are particularly interested in its influence on employee attrition. Before we jump into any serious analysis, we want to get a sense of how does each variable could possibly influence in attrition. To do that, we adopt kepler mir survival curves to explore, explore the trend of staying in pen in different persona. We show here some examples with greater differences and some with less. For instance, let's look at the second row and the first one on the left. Employee gender prob probably doesn't influence attrition. The survival curve also helps us to identify how well different job functions and organizations are doing in employee attrition, which leads us to our first key finding. As shown in the plot, the overall probability of pen workforce is 0 0.7 during the given period, which can serve as a benchmark. Break down into different job functions, it is clear that job D and job L were doing the worst and they were both lower than the benchmark. Break down into different organizations, the best performer was the AUG 1035, but the worst performer was the AUG 1039. Next, we fitted the COGS regression model to uncap the most influential factors on the likelihood of employees leaving. Out of 47 standardized and 100 encoding variables, 32 of them are statistically significant. Among the top 10 variables shown in the table, we can basically categorize them into four factors, salary decile, average trend work from home, employee status, and age rental. Now let's take a look at them one by one. For salary, employee with a higher salary level tend to stay. For employee status, employee with a status of on leave have higher risk to terminate. Moving on, since the age ventile takes up 70% of the top 10 important variables, 
and all the 17 age group variables are significant. Now let's compare the influence of different age group. Based on the baseline group, which is the oldest one, we found that the 15P with the shortest bar is actually the most risky talent to be lost. And the 75P is the most stable group. Overall, as shown by the blue curve, the trend of attrition is nonlinear as age increases. We should probably focus on retaining the little more experienced employees rather than the youngest one. Lastly, let's talk about the one factor that is most related to COVID, ever trend working from home. We found out that being the second influential factor, the remote working model during COVID seems to cause employees to leave. As shown in the last plot, there were over 30% of pen workforce were working from home in the shade period, which was exactly when the most universities were conducting virtual courses. Starting almost the same time, as shown on the right, right plot, employees who changed from working in office to working from home experienced a substantial drop in the survival likelihood. Possible reasons could be that they do not find working from home suitable for them because of lack of technical support, family conditions, or personal preferences. So uh, we have all these findings and now we have the question. So what, based on our analysis, we develop recommendations to improve the current attrition situation from different job functions to organization and age to work from home mode. So uh, going further into like the concept of how we solve different problems, specifically, uh, we uh, plan to target the job function and the organization subcomponents. As for the job function D and L, like, by, uh, like we mentioned in the data analysis part, the data analysis is uh, the investigation part. We can further investigate uh, into like the reasons why they leave or why they are more likely to leave and create intervene um, plan. And also have uh, tracking the follow-up and uh, improvement and uh, have like in um, immediate feedback in terms of like uh, facility continuous improvement. And as for the problem for organization, uh, that's like performing the best and performing the worst. Uh, the idea of itself is to notify the organization that tend to lose the most workers and um, and create the connection between like the worst uh, organization subcomponents and the best performing subcomponents to make sure that there's something that uh, the worst performing component can learn from the best com uh, performing component. And uh, going further specifically for the plan for uh, age groups, we need to understand why they leave and their needs. So investigate the reason for their leaving and identify uh, their needs based on uh, individual level. And there are two major uh, broad uh, level issues that uh, we can target. Uh, the first one is career needs probably not satisfied for different uh, individual workers. And the second one, it could be like the management issues. And uh, as for the career plan and needs not satisfied that uh, category, uh, there is possible reasons such as lack of promotion opportunities or expectation not aligned with existing career ladders uh, existing within the organization. And that can apply to any organization. And uh, the second broad category is management issues. We can further investigate if there is like uh, man, uh, management issues within the uh, executive or manager level. If there's like micromanagement issues or lack of coaching, and it depends on uh, different organizations and it's a case-by-case -case situation analysis. And specifically for the action plan for working from home, the key finding is that employees who ever change from in-person working mode to work from home mode are more likely to leave. So the external factors is that, uh, as we find out, um, there was administration changes, the policy adjustment due to COVID-19 update. And due to um, and, and uh, based on the Microsoft New Future of Work uh, study uh, 2022, employees actually need more flexibility in the hybrid uh, work mode. And that's probably the reason why they're not happy about remote working policy implementation. They might have technical issues, family issues, and it further increased organizational silos and employees might feel socially isolated to the organization and their co-workers. So the idea of our possible intervention is before any work mode policy is being announced, get a sense of how your employee might feel about the possible arrangement and the policy changes. And going further specifically for the intervention, we can use employee surveys to send out surveys to ask questions about potential policy changes, such as on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel about working from home? Or like, are, you, uh, are the working from home policy clear? And we can also add a, another technique such as nudging uh, to ask questions like, do you have separate and suitable uh, place to in your home? 
home to work? Or do you feel comfortable using online meeting collaboration platform? So it's also like serving as a reminder for them to get prepared for the possible policy changes to uh, download uh, associated like, software tools and get prepared in terms of like their working environment. And the entire idea is that uh, there's different stages within the uh, problem solving for any uh, people analytics case. Um, and it also aligns with the organization structure itself. So there's internal consulting. We need to identify the problem within the organization and we need to extract the data from the data system uh, management uh, system. And after that, we perform data analysis, modeling, visualization, reporting, and possibly some predictive analytics depending on the problem itself. And then we communicate with like, key stakeholders and possibly do some behavioral science research and experiment to develop like a scalable product to solve the problem or uh, to prepare a similar problem happening in the future and to get prepared for that. And that uh, different stages, what we can do is from like an organizational level to clear the roadblocks to make the connections between different stages smoother. And it's also the same for any um, people analytics cases, problem identification, solving stage, and um, eventually to the intervention stage. And along the uh, way, we also need to keep a uh, transparent for all the stages to make sure the employee knows uh, what we are doing and what we are intentionally um, to doing. Because in the end, we want to create a Hi, better employee. Sorry to cut in, but you're a little over time and, and we do have some teams afterwards. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Andrew, um, what do you think? Yeah, okay, that's our we... last slide, actually. I'm about mm -hmm. to finish my last sentence. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was about to say, um, uh, because we need ha to create better employee experience to make sure we have happy workers. And if we don't have happy workers, we can in further improve our organization. And that concludes the end of our presentation. And please feel free to ask any questions you guys might have. And sorry about a little over time. That's right. So why don't we transition to maybe like an abbreviated Q&A session so we can um, move on to our, our next team. I have a quick question. I'm curious to your thoughts on using a predictive model as a potential solution. Why might you use one and why and how might you use one or why wouldn't you use one? Okay. I, I think the idea itself is uh, depending on the problem. Uh, if we need, if we have the needs to predict future trend, for example, like using certain parameters in the uh, attrition problem to predict if someone will be likely to leave. But I think it also depends on how the organization wants to solve a problem. If they want to solve the problem using predicting the future or if they want to solve the problem to understand the, the employee needs and understand why they left at the first place. So the predictive analytics could be the further stage after we understand why they actually uh, leave at the first place. Thank were you. you able, were you able to take a look at any interaction analyses or intersection? I know you highlighted a, a lot of the groups that had higher levels of attrition. Were you able to look at any intersection or interactions? Um, I believe like based on our analysis, we didn't really make any interaction terms in the regression. We basically just cover because there are like a lot of categorical variables. So we basically just cover them one by one. So, yes, no. Um, is there been a great re resignation? In the last, uh, since COVID, in the last two years? Yes, no. What's your answer to that? We are answer is that no, because we believe the great resignation is like, I mean, the increase of voluntary right, same, same, is a long term. The, over the last five years? Would, yes, yeah, no. Over the last five years, yes. And over the last in the two recent years, years no. no. Yes, that's Thank our you. answer. Thank you so much, PA Lions, for your presentation.